I learned so much about your nipples. I feel like I know you so well. I mean, you also remind me of someone that I hooked up with who was not a good person. So part of me like hates you, wants okay. to attack you. <laughs> if you had to throw a number on, what do you think of this? My number? I already know my number. You know it. You know it. For... There's no like rough ones where you're okay. like maybe one or two. Is it a rough how estimate? Does, how does it sound? Good. I think it sounds. I don't good. like wearing the headphones. It's but... a lot. That's no. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I think I'm in the same ballpark. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Sometimes wow. a few at once, though. That's the nice thing. And I also include. Oh, do you count that all as one? No, those okay. are different humans. And okay. then also that's women and men. But I've yeah. only had sex with a few women. Yeah. But oh, nice. Yeah. Have you had sick, sex right? with other women? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> yeah, I've had sex with a few women. Nice, my guy. Guys, yeah. what's cool. your type of guy? If you could, if you just had the ideal guy that, like, okay, I would like to try, you know, some my run at homosexuality. Mm -hmm. What kind of guy would you be interested in hooking up with? It'd have to be like crazy foreign, like billionaire accent. Where like <laughs> he sweeps me on my feet, and the whole time we're going out, I'm like, am I doing this? Like, are we gonna? And then like by the end of the night, like you know, we're drinking wine. He's showing me all these cool things and places and his so cars. You want and like shit. you kind of want like a mentor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I you want to like be a, swept away. Some sort of father figure, but like he's foreign, Antonio Banderas type. Like, but is the foreign <laughs> part of the looks, or is that more of like the I don't really understand you, and that adds to the appeal of it, where you're like trying to figure out what's happening. Yeah, it's like mystery. Like, doesn't really count. Like, he's not from America. Like okay. I, nobody's... It doesn't count if it's not on U.S. soil. Exactly. If you're on a oh, boat, well, then that cuts my list in half. I think that what Liam is trying to say is that in uncharted waters, whatever happens in the sea is the laws of the sea. Yeah, maritime laws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe like after you push him off the boat, and you're like, Ma I didn't dude, maybe he's just like a sailor. Like I'm back home, and it's like I'm out in Martha's Vineyard, and some fisherman's like, do you want to go out on my boat, like catch some stripers? And I'm like, yeah, and then like. We're getting fucked up. He's got a nice sweater on. I don't know. Wow, this is getting really downgraded. Where it's like, I don't know, a dock worker? Yeah. Like, just like. <laughs> I a... know I blow a dock worker. I guess <laughs> that would be like in Maryland or something. <laughs> I, wait, I have a question about, because regarding, I'm not going to say your numbers, but when you guys, because you guys are on, like, on the road a lot doing stand up, do girl, like, because male comedians definitely fuck their fans. Yeah. Are you guys, like, looking in the crowd, like, which one of these hunks am I going to take home? Not even for a second. Really? Oh. I'm always, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm not like, I don't go on the road thinking like, oh, I'm going to get it after the show. But sometimes I'm pleasantly surprised by who will come up to me after the show. And I'm like, oh, you're cute and cool. And like, I could see it going there. But it's never like, I'm never scouring the audience during my set. I have never scout. Uh. Sometimes I, I've been I've been doing a show and I've noticed a very attractive guy in the audience that I'm like, damn, okay, maybe I won't do the fucking joke about how my vagina looks like a uh, basset hound ears, you know? <laughs> like, let's omit that from the set just in case this person might want to touch me later and wouldn't be afraid. See, I keep that in the set because I want to see their reaction. Yeah, I'm like what kind of guy? I want them to be this? like. Hey, like I want, the, I want to confidently say in a microphone, my pussy looks like if you threw prosciutto. Like just like on a charcuterie board, <laughs> and I want I want a guy to be like, you know what? I like that. That sounds fucking intriguing. Yeah, that sounds. But also on the other end, have you have you ever gone to a comedy show and been turned on by a female comic? No. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. God, that's a, I. You know what? I have had sex with people after the show. It's very rare. I I think I can a few times in my life have. Has a guy specifically been attracted to me because he saw me on stage? Actually, this did happen a bit ago where a guy had seen me on a date. He was on a date with a chick, saw me perform, started following me on Instagram. Months later, like slides into my DMs. He, very handsome guy. And then we ended up like going on a few dates and uh, he was very attracted to me when he saw me do stand up. See, but is that a local show or is that on the it, road? No, it was local. It was in Brooklyn. No, oh, oh, on the road? No. Yeah, exactly. Never. That's. A, I feel like that's the big difference. Because, like, LA or New York or something, you're like, oh, I could meet this person organically. Yes. But if you're in Wisconsin. Yeah, unlike you, we don't want to blow a dock worker. Fine, fair <laughs> enough. I mean, my parents are dock workers. So, <laughs> you know, they got to get blown. I don't want to <laughs> malign uh, the good work of dock workers. I know yeah. we got a lot of dock workers. 
workers listening right now. You got to blow you, a dock worker for the benefits. Well, dude, purely the, the benefit. First of all, dock worker, you see those fucking meat hooks they got, those fucking hands? Oh my God, those Ooh, things are withered. Hell yeah. No, no, yeah. in like a hot way. They got like Hulk hands. Yeah. You know, you ever get fingered by a Hulk hand? It's a big I've, knuckle. I've, <laughs> it's a big I've knuckle. I've worn those, Good. those gloves and done it, but that's <laughs> Halloween. About it. Yeah. 2017. So, yeah. Uh, we got some great questions, okay? So I would like to uh, pass it off to Ali, you first, because, uh -oh. you know, you are the, the guest of honor. So uh, one of the user questions is, um, I guess it's good. How, how do I get laid more? It's so hard to answer that without knowing this person, because I don't know what's stopping them from getting laid in the first place. They could be a fucking creepy-ass weirdo. I think how to get laid more... Someone who knows who they are, you know, someone who's confident with who they are. Because if you're going to be a creep, not in like a like a going to jail type of creep way, but just like a, he read the, you know, the pickup artist books, like just fully lean into that because then you're going to attract the person who falls for that. So maybe you're not getting laid that much, but at least when you do get laid, your tricks are working for that specific person. You know what I mean? But also, if you're not, if you want to get laid more, um, maybe socialize more, find some sort of community, like a knitting community, if you're into that. You know, if you want a knitting type of gal, just you know, be be out and about. All right, I think it's a it's a pretty good answer. Um, I'm gonna open it to the floor. Um, that's actually really really good advice because I think being even if you're a douchebag, yeah, I think if you just like listen, honey, I'm a douchebag, you'd be like, you know what I love that he's a douchebag. He like owns up to being a douchebag, and then you're <laughs> like, you know, like he's really confident about being a piece of shit. Like that's at least you're not hiding yeah. that you're a piece of shit. Yeah. It sucks when you like think that someone's not and then it's revealed to you that they suck and you're Ugh. like, well, then why did I let you inside of me? That's the worst. Or at least like I'll fuck a horrible person, but I want to know you're a horrible person before you're inside. Yeah. Me. And then be like, you know what? I'm still going to have sex with you. You know, but if you're like, this is fucking great. Like this person is sweeping me off my feet. Yes, yes, yes. And then like. You know, maybe like few days, few weeks, few months later, you're like, damn, this person is a bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's, I mean, like, there's been a time, someone has commented on this on another podcast. I've heard it and it made the most sense to me. It was just like, girls think like, oh, he's faking like to like me just to get my pants. Like, yeah. no, like, it's real. Like, I'm, I think I'm in love with you. And then, like, we have sex and I'm like, oh, like, just all of my love and emotions just flood out of my body at the same moment. Out of the and, tip of your penis? Yeah, and you're just like, oh. you're like, moments ago, you're like, I'm gonna find shelter for her, build her a home, <laughs> murder strangers <laughs> what that do you come think, up to her. What do you think that change comes from? Like, do you think you're just so sex-driven that you're like, this is my my wife? Probably, like, I'm just like, I'm, it's I'm, purely I'm, biological. It could be, it's like evolutionary thing maybe. I'm just, I'm thinking about our future and then it's gone. Damn, that is the definition of gaslighting, yeah. Liam. <laughs> yeah, shit. <laughs> but I feel like that's also fine, but just don't be a dick after. Yeah, well, that's the hard part. It's because, like, you're just. Why like, is that? How because is Because they hard? make. Listen, Al, you gotta understand hard? once cum comes out of your penis, it's nature, man. You gotta be a dick. I'm sorry. It just. Babe, I can't control it. I just can't look you in the eyes no more <laughs> after I come. And I don't want to talk to you or hang out with you or ever really see you again unless it's on my terms when I also want come to come out of my dick again. You understand? Yeah. So just like be chill about There's that. There's a certain level of charm that a man full of semen has compared to a guy with out any cum in his body like zero in the reserve no charm like it's like prince charming like oh let me open this door for you and then just like immediately it's like fucking pick where we're i don't care i mean like, think about it like this this is a good analogy a mozzarella stick a man filled with cum what a joyous thing now take that mozzarella out of that stick and you just got a hollow mm -hmm. what is that breading what is that yeah, panko bread, bread cum crumbs yeah nobody likes that so then do you think that that sets the um the theory that women should wait to have sex because it's like three dates then you actually know if you want to build a house for this woman mm -hmm. murder a stranger for mm -hmm. her you know yeah i definitely wait the only times like that's exactly what should happen but also at the same time that's a difficult thing to do is like 
going on three dates with a person before waiting to have sex with yeah. them. I, I will say this. I actually, so what I do, I have a very great method, okay? Ooh. If I really like a guy, if I like go on a date with a guy, this I'm is your scam. master class? This is, this is a great TED Talk. Honestly, this is actually for the lady listeners out there. If you want to trap a man, you, you definitely wait for sex. I, I wait like a while to have sex. If I really like a guy, here's actually the funny thing. If I go on a date with a guy and I don't like him, I'm like, we're gonna fuck tonight. Yeah, Cause I absolutely. don't I don't care what you think about me. I actually, if we don't have sex or hook up tonight, I would have actually wasted my time having a fucking drink with you or eating a meal. And I like, let's just do it so we can both like get that, you know, uh, uh, serotonin boost. We can both like, you know, just get our bodies touched and let's move on. You know, and then you're just not even I then when a guy doesn't hit me up after I'm like, great. Like and then when he does, I'm like, damn, now I gotta deal you know, and they wanna hang out again. You're like, What? No. We already did that. I fucked you the first time I met you. Didn't you know I didn't <laughs> wanna see you again, you fucking dingus? Like but if you really like a guy, I've I wait a while. And then I say How long is a while? Almost a month. Mm. Whoa. Yeah, but you know, it kinda depends. But then this is the thing. Then you do this is the classic iconic move. You do the um, Hail Mary blow job is what I call it. So you go, and let's say you go two dates with the guy, okay? You just maybe kiss first time, then maybe you get a little handsy the second time. Maybe the third time gets you a little bit more. And if they want to fuck, which you usually always want to fuck on the first day regardless, but you just go, um, I'm just like not really ready to do that, but um, like we can do other stuff. And then on like do you third do it date, in that voice because yeah. I just got what? I, yeah, no, you that's like, like crazy voice. Like, I'm just like not really like um, like it kind of takes me a while to have sex. And like meanwhile, I'm like, you know, look at this number. <laughs> but, I want to build a house for you right now. Yeah, exactly. So, but the hail mary blowjob is where you don't fuck them, but you give them the best blowjob they've ever had, and then they're like, "Wow, you are my wife. Like, we are going to build a home. I will murder anybody that looks at you." And you're like, yes, this is what I wanted all along. This is my fantasy. Um, you know, it's pretty much, yeah. Anyway, let's get to the next question, yeah, next shall question. we? Let's go do it. Okay, so, um, Liam, this one is for you. How many times should one partner let the other cheat? It depends. It depends on how old you are. If you guys are in your 30s, then no. Then it's like, what are we doing here? But if you're if you're in your early twenties and like you know, you're just enjoying life and just having fun, going around fucking other people, it's still a bad thing. But I think there's age groups where it's like if you cheat on someone and you're 45, dude, get it together. Like that's inappropriate. But if you're let's say 20, I think there's more leeway than being older. Go ahead and cut me off. That's all I have for that one. In this scenario, do you imagine uh, Ali and I are fucking? Oh, by the way, the physical movements that were happening while you gave your that diatribe, made... your evil, <laughs> your fucking evil diatribe was just like we're like, oh god. I'm okay, glad go I got ahead, my Alex, acrylics sorry. taken off, or else I would have fucking <laughs> clawed your ass. In this scenario, do you imagine yourself being the one who gets to cheat, or do you also picture you being cheated on as well? Both. Like, okay. Um. It it depends. Like it's. So if I really, like if if you're saying I love you to someone mm -hmm. and they're saying it back, then I don't think you should cheat in that case. But if you guys are just like, you know, you are in a relationship, but it's weird. And then like you have an opportunity to maybe like a girl who does that voice to you at a bar and you're like, I need this needs to happen now. Yeah. Like, and nobody finds out about it. If if you're gonna cheat and get caught, that's bad. Don't do that. <laughs> oh my god, no, that, that's yeah. worse. Well, don't, well, if you don't get caught, oh, then it's really this. if you're not hurting anyone's feelings, then it's like you have a I don't wanna, you have a gaze in the military policy when it comes to cheating. You're like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. don't ask, don't tell, yeah. okay? Don't take a picture of pissing on their bodies, and just don't like, bring it around my kids for Christ's <laughs> sake, okay? Um, wow, this is pretty interesting. See, I actually. My opinion is like the antithesis of yours, okay. which is I think when you're older, it makes more sense. I know. That's what I think. I, in my head, I'm an old woman. Like the only way that this works is if you're in a long term relationship, things are getting a bit stale. You love this person very much. You don't want to leave them. But you're also like, 
I just want to have one fun night a yes. year where I just go out, I go to a bar, I fuck whoever's there. There's no, you know, it's not like Mark from work or something. It's just a stranger. And me and my partner, we both get this one night a year where we get to be free and not feel like we're just tied. It's the purge, but for fucking. Yes. Yes. That's, dude, that's yes. that's why there's so many murder documentaries. Because girls wait till they're like dating guy for like two years and they're like, you know what, fucking this guy, the bellhop at the hotel is not bad. But if you did it in three months, nobody's going to care. You're going to be like, all right. You know. But that's not really cheating. No, see, it, yeah, here's the thing is that we have to kind of like uh, redefine some of these things. Because I think if you're just dating somebody and you have not had an exclusivity talk, yeah. you do whatever the hell you want. We good, okay? Yeah. And then I've actually tried to make that time period last as long as possible in relationships. Because then you can kind of Oh, man, out. that's the best. I'm like, I've had guys like in that blurry zone. Now I sound like a manipulator. I'm like, just for like a year, like, like well, so can we? I'm like, I'm just like not ready to like commit, <laughs> but like we should, but you should treat me like your girlfriend. You've met my entire family. I've met yours, but it's not like I can still fuck people. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I know that's that's the old me. No, I'm better now. I am. I am. But I I think I used to definitely make guys. I would kind of put them in that blurry space, and then once they became my boyfriend, did really you ever did you ever tell them like say say you you ended up being in a long term relationship with someone, but you were in kind of that blurry phase, and you hooked up with other people? Yes. Once you got in the relationship, did you tell them like, hey, when we were about a month? Hell in, no. Why would you do? I wouldn't want them to do that. That would yeah. be that would be no. Just like keep it to yourself. It's all good. Yeah. Like keep it to yourself. And look, in terms of the cheating earlier in your thirties, I feel like if you're really like in a serious relationship, you know, like no, don't fucking do that because you're gonna ruin it. And it's just like that. You shouldn't do that to somebody you love. It's bad. But look, if you're in your forties, fifties, like okay, I will. Truth be told, I did have a very. It wasn't. We didn't have sex, but. I did have I did participate in a very light affair with a man who was married and had a bunch of kids and he was he was like Mormon and so he like he had he wasn't Mormon anymore but he had like what's a light affair <laughs> <laughs> emotional affair hand job in a parking lot like... uh not in a parking lot more like <laughs> like oral copulation I sound mm. like I'm on a trial here yeah. um yeah I uh no, but it was a guy who had four kids. He was married. He got married in his like early 20s. He started having kids really young. You know, he was a part of the church. Then like he's in his early 40s. And then it was just like, hadn't, dude, hadn't had alcohol ever. And like, yeah, we made out a few times. Mormons are and built then we, different. Like, and then, you know, he, you know, like the old, you know, what euphemism for my vagina will Wait, I use? What, uh, anyway, next question. What's <laughs> while we're on this subject, Christ, how old was that man? And what's the oldest you would go to have sex with? Oh, Not, I'd go old as hell. Like Damn. what? I really want to. Howard fuck. J. Marshall. I don't know who that is. Uh, Anna Nicole fucking oh. Smith's uh, sugar daddy. See, I want to. I would fuck an old guy like that, but I would want them to have swag. You know, like really old people who still seem young, but they're old as fuck. Like I just want to know what it's like to fuck an old guy without me having to also be old myself. Interesting. I really want to fuck an old. Who's guy. the oldest guy you've ever had sex with? Probably like not that old. Probably like thirty seven mm. or thirty nine. I went like mid forties. That's the mm. oldest I've ever been, and I was in my early twenties. I was like twenty two, and he was like early forties. Yeah, I've never had sex with like really anyone like old anyone like, period. anyone period. <laughs> we, like, we got that vibe. Like <laughs> I think like a a woman that got divorced in like her mid fifties, and like with the idea that like I'm gonna be back on the market and be hot shit. But now it's been like four or five years. No one's knocking at the door. And so she's just like desperate as fuck at the bar. And like 59, desperate, lonely is... is you're, you're tight. You know, it's yeah. funny. You have a very narrative approach to your sexuality. It's like, he, we are in Ibiza. I meet a man who... I'm a man. off my feet. <laughs> he is a art historian. And, um, but minored in archaeology. He <laughs> in wears <Indiana> Hermes <laughs> scarves. <laughs> And he treats me to a caviar and oyster dinner. I that do like amazing. how specific you are. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I but like I the fan, the worlds you create. I have a lot of fantasies that are just like I've been <laughs> dormant inside <laughs> yeah. of you. But do you think that that holds you back from actually, um, for sure, like meeting people because you're so specific with what you want? Yeah, definitely. Um, My advice for you: 
uh, settle. Settle? Yeah. Oh, trust me. I, I, I settle. I settle often, but I need to, I need to have less fantasies. In what my does head. that look like for you? What does settling look like for you? Yeah, what's the worst? Uh, oh, damn. Yeah, what's Is that what's a bad name? question? Yeah. What's the worst? I was going over this with my boyfriend. We were talking about the worst people we've ever hooked up with. Ooh, I have a bad one. I have a really bad one. And my boyfriend, unfortunately, met this guy. And oh. I made the mistake of telling him afterwards that me and that person had sex. Why would you do that? I realized, I was talking to my friend about this. I realized I'm like overly transparent because I think it's like radical honesty. And I've learned now to stop. But he's already know. Now he already knows you like only, the people. You only tell Tell your part if you run into somebody that used to have sex with you only tell your partner if that person was like really cool and hot and you're like oh i used to date that guy before. yeah oh. everyone that i've told my boyfriend about he's like what the f have you ever <laughs> hooked up with a hot person in your life and i'm like maybe just you damn that's a good answer though one time i told my uh boyfriend uh, he was like told me about this girl he hooked up with who literally was a kleptomaniac and like stole like shit <laughs> from the airbnb that him and his friends were staying at anyway um he like stupidly showed me like a picture of her because they like took one when they were like wasted and i was like this girl looks like trash dude and then i was like damn i'm probably the hottest girl you hooked up with and then he just radical blurt of honesty goes <laughs> no and i'm like what and I wanted to commit suicide. See, my boyfriend, I knew beforehand that he had hot girlfriends. And so it made me, it like boosted my confidence that I was allowed in that world of hot girlfriends. Oh, damn. And then he showed me some like not so hot girls. And I was like, okay, I could have gone. I like knowing that you only hook up with hot people because it makes me feel better. That's a, that's a good, yeah, I kind of like both. I, I also, it's I want them to have hooked up with hot people. But then also be like, but you're the most perfect jewel in all the land. See, I don't believe it. I'm like, tell me I'm like third. I want it to be mm, believable. Yeah, I want them to lie. I want them to be like, you're perfect. Look at you. You're fucking gorgeous. What are you, Cindy Crawford? Anytime you, my boyfriend Bridget says that, I'm like, you're lying. Mm. You're a piece of shit. Yeah, I think that... <laughs> <laughs> you're a repulsive. I, I heard a guy in front of his girlfriend tell me about how hot his girlfriend was in high school. Barf. And like... To the point where I was like, are you doing a bit? Because this is so bad. Like, you can't. And he wasn't. He was He was dead serious. He was attracted to a high schooler. And he's just down to be like, yeah, dude. I mean, she, when she peaked, she was like 15. I mean, honestly, she was definitely the hottest then. I'd say my type, I guess, age range 15 to 17, I would say. There's dudes that do that. They're like, look at my girlfriend. I'm like, when did you date her? And he's like, 2016. I'm like, how old? Be? Like, that was sophomore year of high school. And he's like, yeah, I'm like you gotta let that one go. Like yeah. you gotta. That's nasty ass. Thank um, you. I I like uh, like what you said about you know just owning you know your uh, shittiness even if you're shitty just just lean in. I feel like it's such a boring answer, but it's the truth. It's the truth. The truth it's, is boring. The path of the least resistance. Yeah. You know. I uh, think you won for the Mormon thing specifically. Oh, just because I did something bad. I well, didn't have a moral like yeah. you know, but I didn't have sex with the person. But he, the way he presented it to me, he he basically said exactly what you said, Ali. He was like, "Look, I've been. I I love my wife. We have great kids and everything. I like my life, but like, I lost my virginity to her. We like lost our virginities together. We've never like." He's like only gotten blowjobs on his birthday. He's like never had anal sex. He's never had alcohol, you know? And it's like, dude, let this guy live. And I think he just is like, he, the way he described it was like, it's like a pressure valve. You just gotta like let out a little steam sometimes and then you can like maintain your life of mediocrity. Yeah. So he doesn't hang himself in his garage for his kids to see, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's that's more beautiful now that you put it that way. <laughs> yeah, you know, I helped this guy out. I basically saved a father's life, so. Yeah. Okay, guys. Question number three. Do women really like dad bods? Hmm. Interesting. Well, Liam, you want to open this? <laughs> I have a, I, I borderline between like being like actually fat and dad bod, but I'm pretty tall, so I get away with it. How tall like are you? Six three. Okay. So like I, I can like, I can put on a lot of weight and still be like, if I was shorter, I'd be fat for sure. But like, and I don't think. Yes. Um, <laughs> You're yeah, describing <laughs> like just the physics. Yeah. <laughs> so if I was shorter I, in the same amount of weight, that means bigger yeah. other places. But like I don't. So like if I was hairy, I would have a dad bod. But I don't have like any like hair on my chest 
or torso for that matter. Or face. Yeah, or face. So like I just I just look like a fat infant. Do like, you get concerned around. when people hook up with you that they have like the the women have like some sort of pedophilic tendency? <laughs> I'd be okay with it. Uh, it hasn't crossed my mind, but I'm it's gonna for the rest of my life definitely. Um, you're you're be, you're down to harbor pedophiles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm just saving kids at that point, like. Think about it like rebrand. That. He's a savior. That's true. Could be like my own genre of superhero. Just like I bang the pedophiles so they don't bang the school. Like I go around to schools and I find you the pose that, as, as a kid, a student. Yeah. <gasps> That's oh my genius. god! And then you blow these guys, and then oh wow! I was wow. gonna go full woman, but I'll I'll do what I have to do for the kids. Like That's if that's. See, that'll get you late. Yeah, yeah what you're yeah. saying is like, we're like, well, what do you do? And you're like, I actually get paid by the LAPD <laughs> to have sex with um, pedophiles. And yeah. it actually just, you know, it's good for the community. And uh, I travel for work. Yeah, I it's, travel it's for good. work. There's a few of us out in the field, a few agents. Pension's that are, good. Like, they set you up. It's really nice. Yeah, we're administered throughout, um, you know, some archdiocese and whatnot. But also, uh, you know, I'll do some local jobs. Mm-hmm. But it's it's contract-based. So you'll go to, like, you know, a, a neighborhood or something where, you know, there's a, a, just high pedophilic, uh, you know, uh, tendencies of people, and then you just go and you just bang them out. Wow, you're, it, you'll be like a sex worker, but yeah. it also, like, you be a, a sex worker and saving the children simultaneously. It's like a some weird fireman hybrid, where it's like, I am working for the state and doing something very nice, but at the same time, yeah. Our tax money is going to you to buy short cargo shorts mm-hmm. and a polo shirt. Yep. And eat like and and big Velcro lollipops. <laughs> I just see you skipping, eat, eating a big old lollipop. One strap backpack, just like walk around super cool. No, I You're picture on a... you with the suitcase backpack. Stroller a little one. rolly. I no, I, I, I picture kids. you with a radio flyer red little <laughs> wagon. wagon. <laughs> <laughs> You're going really young, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're skipping. You got like kind of lacy socks yeah. on. We give you a penny farthing uh, bicycle, you know, with a big front wheel. You know, you're mm-hmm. just looking at a lollipop. We we do a little so thing. So we've gone the opposite. We've we've transitioned from dad bod into infant uh, yeah. childhood. Yeah, I have infant bod, but, that, <laughs> but like it, it, people are like, "Oh, you have a dad." I'm like, "No, I don't take my." Every time I take my shirt off, I'm doing it as fast as I possibly can to like like a sweatshirt, like. You know what I mean? Like, were you switching? I don't want anyone to ever... Pool parties as a kid, nightmare. Were you a shirt guy? Oh, in the pool? Yeah. Mm-mm. So, no, no. There's the 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 pool t-shirt fallacy, which is what happens is that uh, a kid thinks that it's going to... Oh, no one's going to see my chunky body. But what happens is that <laughs> your your belly button then looks yeah. also just like a crater on your body. Bowl so. of soup down there, dude. <laughs> it's not good. It's like a body contour suit where you just see every detail. Yeah. Yeah, you're like body conned, but with no fucking uh, spanks on. Wait, so what was the original question? Yeah, what oh, was, oh, dad bod. Yeah, do women really like dad bods? I will say this. Um, the interesting thing is, I could really go either way. What I cannot do is a man with like washboard abs. I hate I, a ripped. Like super ripped guy. I'm like, it's not even fun because they feel like it's just a hard body. It's like, why guys, I don't know, would you want to fuck a female bodybuilder? No. I need to show you this But that's photo. not the same. Um, well, a guy, I like when a guy's strong and has like big arms and like, you know, can be like minorly, like like muscular is hot, you know? But also I've done a string beam, you know? I've done a, uh, a whole, a little linguini man, you know? Yeah. A Timothy <laughs> Chalamet, boy, al dente linguini yeah. body. Um, you it's know, because those guys, here's the thing, tall ass, thin guys. Oh, big huge old cocks. monster. Like yeah, a monster dick. Michael yeah. Sarah, like Sarah. <laughs> they, they all have big dicks. Yeah. Wild big dicks. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I've done thin guys. I've done bigger guys. But the dad bod, I will say sometimes, I don't like when a guy is like, smaller than me in a way. Like if he's, if he's super thin, then like you got to be tall as hell, you know? But it's like. I just don't want to feel, you know, as a curvy lady, I don't want to feel like I'm a fucking R. Crumb girl just with my fucking, just like, bruh. like, I don't want to, I don't know. I don't want, I feel like I'm going to break his rib cage. He's got to be able to pick me up without, you know, pretending like, he's like, no, you're not, you're not heavy at all. Yeah, I, I need him to save me from a burning building, <laughs> basically. Yeah. It goes back to that biology thing. But the dad, see, I don't mind it because if a guy's, like my ex of several years was like, you know, he had a dad bod and it was like nice because I felt like I was like the thin hot one and he was just the kind of like, not portly. He just was like, he was pretty muscular, but also like, 
you know, a little the flab, you know, and I kind of liked it because I just, you don't know, he was big. You got to know how to wear the dad bod. You can't be one of those guys who's wearing too small a shirt, turns into a crop top. We see the underbelly. That's no. not that's not a good yeah. look for anyone. No, it's also don't dress like your goddamn Johnny Depp. Let's not do that ever for anybody, no matter what type of bod. This is more of a sartorial thing don't don't be a guy who wears thumb rings unless you want to let everyone know that you have chlamydia <laughs> yeah there's like a limit to the amount of bracelets like men wearing bracelets it's like a symbol for how many sexual assaults they've caused yeah definitely. yeah, like, yeah it's like, like one bracelet stripes. it's like you know okay it's it's on the line i don't like any more than one bracelet i don't know You're about right. any bracelets because then they're always like oh i got it in bali yeah yeah have you ever done a silent meditation retreat so actually i went to um the angola national forest and they had i'm like i can't do this but like just like leather bracelets Guys are bringing back the one dangly earring now, too. That's you fine. That? I'll fuck I'm not that. into really? that. I can't do an earring. I, I can't, can't really do, an do earring. jewelry. I'm not into. I like I like a necklace. I like just like a single gold chain. That's I like a hot. gold chain and I like some rings. I like some but rings. Not, not like a skull ring. I like maybe maybe depending on the guy, it has to match the vibe. Maybe like a turquoise. Do women really like dad bods? I'm going to say that, you know, out of the two women that are here, it sounds like we both do. So I think that. I think the consensus is yes. I think, and most women that I talk to are not really into like a hard, super hard bodied man. I think baby bod is also a thing though. Mm, I definitely, I mean, my nipples are horrible, but like. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, like. You got puffy nips, huh? Dude, it's so fucking puffy. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was a tell, nightmare dude. in high school. I'm, like, a, I'm a fucking, I'm a uh, a nipple like like Miss Cleo. I, I could mm. see a man, I could look at a man, and I could tell just by looking at you what your nipples but look like. But I also like. think, I, I don't think that's a disadvantage though, because I think women, I think some women are open to being sexually curious. And so I think having kind of, you know, maybe a little dad bod, a little baby face, a little... Big pepperoni nips. nips i think it you know i think as a woman you're like oh i can kind of you know i can play with your boobs and it feels like a little bit you know it's interesting less rigid in your masculinity i used to um i i used to have sex with this guy who um it's funny he he felt he was like feminine in a way but he had like full chest hair big dick and like a pretty like big jaw and stuff like that too. But but there's something about him that was very feminine. And a lot of times when I ha was having sex with him, what actually would turn me on is if I like imagined that he was a woman. Do you ever accidentally grab a guy's boobs and <laughs> pretend they're actual he boobs? Thin, and then though. you're like, oh. He was like, oh, I hadn't done that. But he was he was like pretty thin. He was like that, like he was like thin and very lean. Mm. But and he totally had like really like like a wide for i don't know why he felt really it was like his personality there's like feminine aspects of him and it was like yeah it was really weird it was like i don't know now i'm just this is tmi yeah. i'm just like, you guys were like oh you're just having flashbacks I'm just, you're like and then <laughs> when he caressed my arm thoughts on guys with their nails painted no nope. it kind of no. seems like it's so try hard it just seems like it's fuck me guys. Well, it's fuck <laughs> it's fuck boy guys, and also it's to just be like to look like you have clean fingernails. Because yeah, guys, yeah. they have nasty yeah. ass fucking yeah. fingernails, so they're like, I'll just paint it over. I think it's guys' way. You're gonna give of... me a staph infection in my pussy when you finger <laughs> me. I don't want that. Instead of guys wearing shirts that say I'm a feminist, they're like, I'll paint my nails so women know that I'm fighting the good fight when they're not. They're probably, you know, they probably have a couple women writing notes, notes apps in their phones waiting to release them. Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean. I feel yeah. like those guys that pander to like pandering for pussy. One, I'm like, let them pander. But also, when a guy's like, I am just an ardent feminist. I'm like, you are a predator. I think because yeah. I think that the pendulum is swinging too much to being like, I wholeheartedly agree with you. Like as a as a person of privilege, I'm gonna let you have. A <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, this guy is toxic as fuck. Yeah. Like no, no. Back to my nipples, real quick. <laughs> Please. I just was reminded of this. Can I see them after the pod? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I would love, can we pose with your nips? Mm -hmm. yeah. We should take a photo. That, that's yeah. a thumbnail yeah, for this episode. <laughs> I, <Just> a... <laughs> going into like, having to wear like the tight Under Armour shirts, yeah. going into like a locker room for like high school football and shit. I, I, if I went in with my nipples as are, like it was horrible, like I'd yeah. get roasted. So I'd have to go in the hallway and flick them 
like s moments before going in so that th that way they were hard oh. and not puffy before going <laughs> that in. That makes me so sad. I love the idea of wife. you being like, I gotta get these nipples hard before yeah. I get in that You're locker like a room. Playboy just... model just putting cold Diet Coke <laughs> yeah. cans on your tits to make them hard. Yeah. And that was, and then, yeah, that was my life for years. Still but do you is. feel more comfortable with it now? Or now I don't still? care. Now okay, I'm like, good. also, nobody sees them now, so I don't have to worry about it Aww. as much. But if someone what did, about the I'd pool? Be, what about the beach? At the beach? I go to the beach. If I'm at the beach, I'm shit-faced, so I don't care. I'm fine. But like, if... I like how we're at the beach now. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, <laughs> if I'm actually in the water, then I don't care, but... Yeah, others being 17 and showing other 17 year old guys yeah. my female nipples, that can't happen. Anyways, next question. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate you being so open about your nipples. I mean, I've been it's open about way too many things. <laughs> um, okay, this is... Is this the last question? This is the last question. Oh, and I'm, I'm going to have you take it away, Allie. Um, the question is... Should you tell your partner how many sex partners you've had? Um, okay. This is tricky because I feel like there's no right or wrong answer. I feel like it depends on who you're with and, you know, picking up a vibe of... I don't know. I... My boyfriend has had less sexual partners than me. And so I think there was kind of a shift in his perspective on me and not in like a bad way. He wasn't like, you fucking dirty bitch. But I think as a man, you probably want to be more experienced. But I also think he has more experience than me because I was just using my body as a vessel for men for so long that I'm like, none of these experiences help me grow in any way. Whereas his, you know what I mean? I think the best move is give a ballpark. Give a ballpark. Don't be specific. Just say like, oh, I think a little over this much. Because when you get specific, it feels it feels like you're picturing every single one of them and then looking him in the eyes and being like, well, there was this guy and this guy. I feel like a ballpark is a safe amount. Or just figuring out if you guys want to or don't want to share that info. Okay. All right. That's like, I feel like these answers are so boring. No, they're not. I'm, I mean, they're they're advice. This I don't like advice. being. I, I'm not like a messy girl. You know how some like girls like to have the drama fuel. I can't. It I think life is too dramatic. Like I can't even believe why people put so many obstacles in their way when they're dating or having sex because life is already so hard. It's already hard to date someone if you're both really into each other. It's still like so goddamn difficult. A relationship is alchemy. The fact that it even happens that men and women even convene in that manner is like wild to me. I'm like, how? Like this is absurd that this is even working. And that's with two willing and wanting participants. It's just like, why would you even like mess that up? Like anytime I've like, I've never been like, the, I don't know, dramatic in that way or like been like, I wanna make him fucking jealous. Yeah, like I'm fucked up in the head and I like that about me. I can't even, that just seems like life would be, it's already too difficult. But in terms of, in my opinion, I really don't think you should tell people how many people you've had sex with. Like I'll tell my friends, but like I would not tell my partner because then it's like you said, it kind of, they can gamify it in a way. Like the ballpark, maybe, but even then like, Cause you'll share stories like I've, you know, been like, oh my god, this one time at Burning Man. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> you know, and you, you, you kind of like the, you know, the more you're with your partner, you share stories about people you've had sex with. But to give this like finite response of a number is like somebody's think... gonna be the victor and somebody's gonna feel like the loser and somebody's like, I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't want them to to judge me based on that. And I think it's hard to not because I would totally judge. And as, as much as you can say, you know, no judgment, but we're fuck human beings judge. So that whole fucking thing of no judgment is just null and void, period. I think that's also a good point of not saying that early in a relationship because it will just eventually reveal itself over time to an extent. Yeah, with storytelling, which is... You know, what a great way to share, you know, it's fun. How would you approach the subject if a guy asked you that? I, I would just be very direct and say, I don't really feel comfortable answering that. Yeah. I don't, I don't like, I've had my fair share of sexual experiences. I could tell them when I lost my virginity yeah. and I've been in a lot of like long-term relationships. And in between those, I've done my fair share of 
you know, uh, banging, but I don't want them to know how many fair shares I've had of banging yeah. in between those long term relationships that I've had. It's an entire carnival. Yeah. That's the fair. <laughs> it's a cast. It is it's a, the carnies. It's the... it's you know how like the Simpsons has tertiary characters <laughs> when you see the whole Simpsons universe and you're like. Oh, there's Bumblebee, man. But then there's also Gil, you yeah. know, and then there's like, you know, there's so many. You got Dr. Hibbert in there. But then you got some of those real like, you know, backwoods kind of Simpsons characters. You're like, oh, I forgot they were yeah. in the show. And you're like, oh, they're featured in an episode. Enough to like where if one of them died, you wouldn't feel that bad about oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I'm sure. Have you guys ever thought about if somebody you've had sex with is dead? Yeah. I, that, <laughs> I, I thought that's... about that a lot. I know. I'm pretty sure no one's died. But like, <laughs> I'm that would be an interesting day to be like. Oh my god! I had sex with that woman, like, and then it's like she died, and like it was some crazy way. I'm like, trying to think. I feel like someone I have hooked up with has died, and I'm not. I can't recall. But if it comes to me, I'll text you guys because I feel like I remember something like that happening. I've made out with two. There's two people that I have made out with that are verified dead. Verified dead. Yeah, but How'd they go. It didn't. Have sex. <laughs> no, I have a feeling. <laughs> no, no. Oh. No, actually, both were really sad deaths. God. Oh, <laughs> like, no. I mean, they were young, and it was, like, really sad. Both were very tragic and sad. Oh. Anyway. Have you um, ever, let's, let me just uh, quote Louis C.K. real quick. Have you, oh, good. <laughs> you ever heard the Louis bit? Where he, like oh, a, good. A, a girl blew him, and then two years later, she killed himself, and he's just like... So that, she killed himself? Oh, she killed herself. I'm sorry. And he's just like, yeah, that's how long it takes after you blow me to kill yourself. It's, it's two, like the ring. Yeah, yeah. It's two years. I mean, will die. I I feel like here's the thing is that like I've had I've had like one night stands and I'm like, I don't know, that guy was a train hopper. I mean, he was living a <laughs> risky life. You know, he could have. I don't know. It's like how many people have you had sex with that have either died or have like you know had a severe injury, mm. lost a leg. That'd be that'd be more interesting. Like I fucked a guy and then he lost his eye or something. You know, someone gets paralyzed like soon after. Like what if you got like the best stick of your life? You're like I can't wait. Wow. To go out with this guy again. Boom. Paralyzed. What do you do then? Dry hump. <laughs> yeah. Go yeah. Back yeah. To now humping. I'm in control. I just for some reason imagine this person being in a train accident and having their legs cut off by like, a train. Seven. I don't know why. I just have that vision. For me, it'd be a horrible boating accident. He's just out in the seas. Oh, it, out you're, you're really nautical, like, nautical theme to a lot of your sexual mm, conquests. Yeah. You do look like one of those kids, you know, the Murdoch family, where like pretty much everyone is dead except for yeah, the one son. I, I do kind of look like them. You look yeah. like the bastard child of yeah. that family. Yeah, or just like a, a cousin that's just like shows up and he's just like, oh yeah, I, oh everyone just blown to bits by a shotgun. Yeah, we should do an, a whole episode on the Murdochs. Just side episode on that whole murder because that's fascinating have you um, heard about this? no i'm very curious it's the most oh, this insane thing wild. ever yeah wow is this a true crime podcast yeah. Yeah. holy cow we're pivoting yeah. we're like which one of the murdoz would you fuck <laughs> <laughs> which is the hottest murdoch one of them was uh apparently killed uh someone like he was gay but he didn't want to tell anyone and so you know how like they all just like are connected to these crazy murders? yeah yeah one of the kids I guess was hooking up with this guy, and then oh, was that the random kid who was found yeah, like found in the road? Yeah, is this yeah. a fucking Netflix documentary? Or do I gotta listen to a podcast or something? I think on Hulu, on ABC or Nightline or something like that, they did a whole series yeah. on it. Okay, it's, it's fresh. I'm watching. It goes yeah. deep, it's fresh. Yeah. But they're all these cute little ginger kids. Yeah, they all got dad bods, Wait, even infant mom. bods. Do you think I'm ginger, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Fuck, dude. What no, do you that's mean? A good How thing. do you not know that you're ginger? Because my hair is not red. But you it's a little, freckles. you got strawberry, yeah. you got it's strawberry, strawberry blonde. Tinge. That's not red though. Yes, it is straw. What do you think the strawberry is? What do you, what color is a strawberry? You're not right. like, you're not fucking like fire red or anything, but Which you Which is kind of hot sometimes. You ever oh, I love, I, I, I don't saw this guy it. who had like fucking bright red hair, like total ginger and he was like fucking hot. Yeah. Mm, all right. Well. If it makes you feel good, huh? Yeah, it does. It kind of helps. <laughs> I feel like it's different. It's better than being just another brunette, another blonde boy. Like it's you're recognizable. Little... Is there a number you would want to hear from a guy, or 
No. Because I can't get away with like, I don't feel comfortable answering that. The girls can be like, shut up. No, please. they. you can say that because you'd be like, look, I don't I, I don't think that it would be helpful for us to sh divulge that information for one with one another. I think it would be inappropriate because one of us is going to maybe feel bad about this or be bitter or have like some lingering resentment. And I just don't want to do yeah, that with it's, you. Because if it's a small, if it's a smaller amount than, you know, me, then I'm going to think... You're a pussy. Yeah, why haven't you <laughs> fucked more? And if it's a bigger amount, then you're like, do you do anything besides fuck? Yeah, you judge regard. Like, I mean, I dated this guy who told me, like, he had so many long term relationships that he's like, he would only, I think he only had sex with like eight women. And I was like, all right, Mormon tabernacle <laughs> choir. Like, this is fucking, like, no. And then I feel like a dirty whore. Like, I'm like, oh, eight? Okay, that's, all, that's, yeah, no, that's, that's average, I guess. You feel like a realtor trying to sell a house. You're like, oh, that's, that's charming. Yeah, oh. it is, that's quaint. I would say your number is quaint. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, ever, if they said like in their like, you know what would be a good number, I guess, if they were like, oh, I don't know, 20, 20 to 30 some odd women, I'd be like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Because then Depending I'd be like, oh, how yeah, old me, they are. Me too. Yeah. If they're like 50 and they're like 20 women, I'm like. Yeah. Okay. Priest. Yeah. Do you ever think about your number and like, like, oh, this could be like a small village. In like oh, the, the population. Yeah, it would like, be the w worst constructed village ever. No one would know how to assemble anything. Just a bunch of idiots. Some guys would be real good at eating pussy, but w wouldn't know how to build <laughs> a shelf for their damn life, yeah. you know? Like, gun to their head. They're like, build this Ikea shelf. And they're like, just give me the bullet now. Could you identify the leader of the village? Yes. Who do you think would take control? I had uh, definitely a sexual experience with a real Patrick Bateman type. And um, I think he would definitely be the um, the most like alpha bro of them all. I think also, I mean, look, with my number, I'm like, there's definitely got to be some some dead ones in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we got to, you know, or at least horrendous accidents, you know, definitely some have become fathers now. That's weird. You know, that's that. Has that happened to you where like somebody you've had sex with become a dad? Like, I really have no idea. Ugh, it feels like with, every sexual partner feels like a vague memory that I'm like, was that real? I couldn't tell you one thing. I remember like some vivid. I remember like very I, like I'll have flashes of just like I'm in memento yeah. basically. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, against the dress. You know, <laughs> it'll like come to me and everything. And I'm like, oh, you know weird weird things that have occurred and i've had a lot of weird experiences anyway just i'm just staring <laughs> off in the distance like a vietnam war vet as like choppers are going off in the distance <laughs> guys i i think this was uh fantastic i really you know i thank you both for your insight and i really hope that uh you know the viewers can glean onto any of this information and you know and uh you know use it uh use it to your advantage use it to your disadvantage you know learn how to seduce women or manipulate them whatever you see fit um yeah, I really want to thank you for joining us. Yeah, for thank you, Allie. Me. Appreciate it. I um, learned a lot. Yeah, I, I about saw your it. nipples at yes. least. I learned so much about your nipples. I feel like I know you so well. I mean, you also remind me of someone that I hooked up with who was not a good person. So part of me like hates you, wants okay. to attack you, <laughs> but you're also so kind and sweet that I'm like, I want to be your friend. But yeah, I hope we can get. Past you're like that, a but... shelter dog when it and Liam <laughs> looks like your attacker. Yeah. Oh. oh.